Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching all that stuff. You know, I appreciate it. And um, whew, today is fun. I'm having a good time. I'm in on one photo raw and I'm working with textures. Now I did a recent video that I'll put there with um, Luminar uh, using textures. Um, and you know, I, honestly, I really love textures. You just can't like do videos about them all the time because people get bored. Um, but you know, until like uh, yesterday or the day before, just in the last day or so, um, I didn't really even get to the texture filter in on one. And once I got to it, I was kind of like, you know, giddy as a schoolgirl. I was like, oh my God, this is so fun. Um, I really do like textures because it allows you some creative outlets. You can do some interesting and cool things. And so I use my own textures as well as other texture packs that I've purchased before, like I mentioned in that video. And um, I just like to play around with them and have fun and get creative. So let me hop into on one and explain why I'm so excited about the texture filter here. So I am in their develop module um, or edit module. Sorry, develop is what it's called in Lightroom. Same thing, it's where you make all the edits. Um, and I'm on the develop tab. I'm gonna go over to effects and to get the texture filter, you just click add filter and you click on textures and there's a texture. So here's the cool thing. As you can see, there are textures already built in and it's not just like, hey, here's a couple of textures. There's a lot and so um, I had not honestly even played with this until, like I said, in the last day or so, but it does a really good job of sticking the texture on your photo and kind of blending it together. So you've got some sort of presets here. They got bokeh filters, they got uh, filters, uh, textures, they got grunge, they got leaks, they got postcards. Um, I'm gonna go uh, just kind of reset this. And if you click on this section here, that's called categories, you can see you've got all these categories. So maybe I'll go to skies uh, and then within skies, you get all these different skies you can choose. So I'm gonna go find a nice sunset, which there's one around here somewhere that I like. Uh, this one looks pretty good. And I just put a sunset behind that as a texture. Um, and so that's basically like replacing the background. It's kind of blending it in behind it fairly well. I mean, obviously the light's kind of leaking through there a little bit. Um, but I mean, just literally out of the gate, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, and there's a lot more other things you can do. This skies looks pretty good. Um, anyway, there's a lot of different categories. They even have this text category, which I think is pretty interesting. Now keep in mind, you can go in here and say, hey, opacity is a little too much. I want to take that down and blend it in a little bit more to the background, and there you go. Don't forget, you can also always go add a filter and then make further adjustments to your image. Um, a couple of other cool things uh, that exist here. Um, by the way, there's an opacity slider here. Uh, you can take that down, and that impacts not just the opacity of the texture, filter, which is what this top one does, right? This is the opacity of the texture filter. This is the opacity of the texture itself, right? So there's a little bit of a difference there. You also have this tone and color section where you can affect the brightness um, or darkness, right? The saturation and even change the, the hue. Um, here, I like this invert. You can actually invert and make the texture inverted. So you're not impacting the base image, you're inverting the texture itself. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then of course you can colorize. So here you got a button and colorize just, you know, it's on red, but I can come over here to blue or pink or whatever and just kind of change that, change the amount of saturation and just make a completely different look out of it. Uh, you also have this transform section and here you can scale the texture, which means bring it in or bring it out, right? And then here you have flipping it uh, up and down or rotating it left or right. So a lot of different options. Here's another thing you can do. Um, I clicked on uh, this import, and if you remember from my last um, um, video on textures, I had the Bisbee Texture Collection. I've actually imported that. Now it's within um, on one photo raw. I don't have to go get one of those textures each time. So let's say I have another texture collection I wanna import, which I do. I'm gonna click import. I'm gonna say desktop. I gotta go to my desktop, find my textures, and here's my texture pack. And here we go. I want to import these textures right here and include that one and that one. I don't want the one pager because that's like a summary slide. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to, uh, I don't want to choose the category. I'm going to add category and I'm going to call it texture pack two. So say, okay, okay. And it's going to import these. You can see it's importing these, uh, these textures. You give it a second. They're kind of fat files. It's going to take it a moment. But boom, it's been imported 12 and there are no errors and here are my textures uh, and I say close. So now I can just go in and I can go to category 
and I scroll down and there's texture pack two. And then within each of those, I can grab my different textures. So I apparently have a New York image that uh, has made it into there, but that's actually kind of cool. I've got a New York street scene as a texture that's kind of in the back of that. So I don't know why that was in that folder, but it is, but who cares, it's kind of fun. Um, there we go, I'm adding my own texture pack that I've created, or you know any texture pack that you buy off the web, you can import and then use directly within On One Photo Raw without having to go get a texture each time. So I think that's really cool. I'm gonna show you one more example of a photo I've already um, experimented with. I'm gonna get out of here, I'm gonna go back to this, and let me find the photo, here it is. I'm gonna say edit. Now, I've already edited this one. Uh, I've just happened to turn off the different filters. So let me get into effects. Here we go. Uh, the first thing I did was add the texture filter. And as you can see, it's a postcard filter. So that's in the paper category. And then I added this postcard two, right? So you can see all the different options here. Here's postcard two, which looks like a postcard with a stamp on it, all that stuff. It just looks cool, so I went with that. Um, I made a couple of adjustments here to the brightness, the saturation, the hue shift. I did a little colorization to make it a little bit more blue. So basically I went from this base image to that uh, texture, which is the postcard, plus some color adjustments right there in the textures filter. Next I added dynamic contrast filter. As you can see, that really kicked up the contrast. And I used small, medium, uh, no I didn't use small, I used medium and large details as well as some further refinements here in the tone with highlights uh, and shadows. So once again, there's the before, just the texture adjustments and the texture filter, and now with the dynamic contrast. And the last thing I wanted to do was, I wanted to pop some of these uh, kind of uh, brighter uh, orange kind of yellow from the light, so I added this sunshine filter, also brighten the image a little bit by adding a high amount, right? So um, that was at like 67 or something. Uh, took the warmth down a little bit, but added some saturation and some glow. And basically went from that, a little, excuse me, too dark for me, to that, a little bit brighter. And let me show you the before. And the after, by the way, as you can tell, I also did a crop, which is a 16 by 9. Because there's a lot of foreground in this image, and I just took some out to make it more, uh, a little bit more cinematic looking. But it was quick and easy. And one more time, there's the before. No texture, no filters, and there's the after, which is the texture plus dynamic contrast and the sunshine filter. And that's really how the um, textures filter works in On One. It's super easy, super powerful. There's a lot of options built in, plus you can add your own, so they're now stored in On One, so you can quickly get to them within the texture uh, overlay filter. And it's quick and easy, and uh, just like that, you can turn something Kind of, uh, you know, not a bad photo that's Paris. Um, obviously it's Paris, so it's kind of pretty. And I'm not saying my photo is pretty, but I like my photo, but uh, you know, Paris is gorgeous. And I turned it into kind of a vintage postcard look with a little bit of uh, like grain and grit. And it was quick and easy, literally just took a couple of minutes. That is the power and the fun of the texture filter in On One Photo Raw. I just had to talk about it because I like it. I'm having fun. I'm gonna keep doing more and experimenting, but. I'm diving into all the different filters here and on one, having a lot of fun. I've put a little playlist together. I'll put, put it up there uh, to cover all my on one videos and I plan to continue to add to that. So hope you're getting something out of it and enjoying these videos. I'll be back with more soon. So thanks for watching my friends. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care and adios.